Pell Grant is significant, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm glad you mentioned that. And what we know, we have data to support all this in terms of students' uh, persistence and staying in school and helping them to, to, to stay there. And the summer Pell coming back was a major, major victory for, for our yes. schools. So supporting that is, is, is critical for impacting retention and, and graduation. Um, and, and you know, part of the way I, I talk about it is also that there are you know, certain realities that we need to face and truths we need to speak, including the fact that we have a significant number of our students who are not graduating for four years. And they are students who are, in many cases, the first in their family to go to college. Mm -hmm. And the reality of it is their parents are looking at them and saying, you better get a job, right. graduate or get a job. And we don't want them to have to make a choice, a false choice, which is either go out and make some money right now or finish your education and, and, and increase the possibility of making much more money through your lifetime, right? right. And, and, and students every day at our HBCUs are making that choice based on money and instead of opportunity and capacity. And so we want to take that off the table. And, um, and that's also about the Gear Up grant program and also TRIO, yep. so we're yep. working on that as well. Absolutely. Well, um, this is a fun question I'm gonna ask you. Okay. Uh, you're from California, uh, and there are a lot of colleges and universities in California. Yes. What, what was your decision, what was the, your, your process of going through, because you know, when students are thinking about colleges, why did you pick Howard University. Out of, oh, there are 3,000 colleges and universities mm -hmm. in the country. I know your, your academic profile was off the chart. Uh, why did you pick Howard University? I always wanted to go to Howard. I had family members who went to Howard. I heard the stories about Howard. Thurgood Marshall went to Howard. I knew as a, as a child I wanted to be a lawyer. You know, I grew up, my parents met when they were graduate students at UC Berkeley in the 1960s, when they were active in the Civil Rights Movement. Right. And among the many heroes of that time were the lawyers who understood the skill of the profession of law to translate the passion from the streets to the courtrooms of our country. And one of the heroes of that were, of course, Thurgood Marshall and his, and his tutor, Charles Hampton Houston. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so going to Howard was something I always wanted to do. But there were, a, among the, the, the kids that I grew up with and, and my family, we all, most of us, many of us went to HBCUs. Some went to Fisk, some went to Spelman, some went to Morehouse, um, and I went to Howard. But it was interesting, okay, because to your point about California, I will also say this. So freshman year, the California club, it was really big. <laughs> then winter came. <laughs> Sophomore year, the California club was small. <laughs> People were like, they couldn't take that weather. Um, so it did shrink um, considerably, but there there were still a lot of us. Well, kind of well, well can, well, you know, while we're talking about that, uh, you know, college, you know, college life is great, but can you share with us how your experiences at Howard University helped shape you mm -hmm. individually? Mm -hmm. I know you, you touched on it a little bit, but just if you can go a little bit deeper in terms of how it had an impact Absolutely. on you. Uh, uh, I often say, um, and my sister Maya is here, I, I often say there are two things that shaped who I am today. Um, my mother and my family, and Howard University. Um, and we talked a little bit about this yesterday. I think most of the people who are here today were there yesterday. But when you look at that phase of life, 18 through 24, you know, we know that age is more than a chronological fact, right? There are phases of life. And that phase of life in particular is where we are now outside of the, the womb of our family and our neighborhood and, and, and the church we grew up in. We are now going into the world where we then will become aware of other things that we now can choose what we want to do and what we want to associate with. And in that way, we also then start to form our sense of, of our identity, self-identity. And so being at Howard University, meant that I knew I was interested in public policy. And then there was this thing called the Liberal Arts Student Council. And I thought, well, I'm going to run for what turned out to be my first political office <laughs> for freshman class representative of the Liberal Arts Student Council. Wow. That was my first election. Wow. And I would walk around Howard's campus handing out my flyer <laughs> and asking people to vote for me. 
Um, and one of the people who also ran, I'll never forget, and we have stayed kind of in contact, is Shelly Young from Jersey, and she was tough, I was from Oakland, and so, <laughs> but Ryan, that, um, the debate team, I joined the debate team and actually got the Frederick Douglass Scholarship wow. during that time, wow. and we would go, and we would go to all these universities that were not HBCUs, mm. and some were, but many were not, and debate. Um, I, you know, I, I pledged a sorority. I was the, I ended up being the chair of the Economic Society. Wow. You could do all these things, and it was expected of you. And the other piece of it is that there were no barriers mm -hmm. other than yourself. Mm -hmm. And when you're in that phase of life, to be told there is nothing preventing you from being this thing, if you earn it and you work hard for it. And that's very empowering. That's very empowering at that phase of life because then you leave that experience knowing there are no barriers. Now, of course there are. Systemic barriers around race are prevalent and rampant in our society. But you know there is no barrier that you have in terms of what you believe you can do. The other people have their issues. But you leave that experience knowing you can do anything and that you belong everywhere. And, I, and the other piece of it is this, and I, and I mentor a lot of people, and, and this is the other thing I say to them. Um, be careful when, when people will come up to you, and we've all had this experience, and they'll come up to you, oh, you're special. You're different. You be careful about that also. Because there is something about that communication that is also suggesting to you that you are alone, and there is no one else like you. And, and coming out of an HBCU, the student knows there are a lot of us. There are a lot of us. And, and that also contributes to one's confidence and pride, right? And so it's a, it's a remarkable, very important experience, and, and influenced my life in profound ways. Well, I love your stories and, and, and the message that students, I, I, and I love hearing you say you mentor students yeah. and you mentor oh, yeah. people. And, yeah. it, and, that's, and it, that is part of that spirit of giving back. You know, mm -hmm. you, 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 you've been blessed with a lot, Absolutely. but you're sharing your talents with others and that is so wonderful. So, but and I'm a recipient of that. I'm a recipient yeah. of that. Right. There are so many who have mentored and, and have been supporting me along the way. Yeah. Um, so, right, yeah. each one for one, yeah. and, and, and that's what we do. Well, I know she didn't name your sorority name. Well, if I'm not going to talk about the president, I'm not going to talk about my sorority. But it's Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. <laughs> yeah. well, I just thought I'd just I was just trying to just go down the middle. <laughs> <laughs> I just dropped that in there. Uh, now, I was actually talking to the national president. I told her we were going to be talking. She said, Dr. Yeah, Dr. Uh -huh. she said, make sure she mentioned AK. I said, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 but thank you. Um, but you know, it's really interesting, because I, I wrote a book recently. And we did um, a book tour. And actually, the one that we did over here in DC at GW, um, many of my sores, including those that I pledged with, were in the audience. and when. Um, it, Jonathan Capehart was actually the, the person who moderated the discussion, and he mentioned you pledged AK. And so my sorority sisters who were in the audience then 